What always strikes me when we report stories like our testing and on our missile today is the reaction of the North Koreans when they call this sort of thing that we do. Uh, and this was about a missile that flew from you know, the Air Force Base in California right into the Pacific, that that's provocative, that that's a provocation. Uh, ignoring all the times they've been launching missiles left and right. In fact, Kim Jong-un now launching more of them than his father and his grandfather combined, and yet we're the provocative ones. To former U.N. spokesman Rick Grinnell. Rick, good to have you back again. What did you make of that reaction? Look, Neil, we have known for a very long time that North Korea was trying to get this capability. Uh, they were basically allowed to, to garner this capability, almost unfettered during the Obama administration. I wrote years ago that when they did a missile test that uh, was a rocket launched into space, that that was a sounding of the alarm because it could reach Los Angeles, Seattle, San Francisco, the West Coast. The East Coast really didn't uh, react, but now that it's getting closer to the East Coast, suddenly all you elites on the, uh, on the Washington, D.C., New York City corridor are alarmed by this. We've known this for years that this is happening. I think we've got to get very serious about sanctions. I think there's still time for diplomacy. Sanctions are not going to be um, easy because the only sanctions that I believe that will work right now are banking sanctions on the country of China. That's not without pain, as you know. You know, Rick, I'm glad you said that on the country of China, not one Chinese financial entity. And why is that important? Because when we went after this one and this lesser player, uh, you're, you're smarter at this than I am. Why is that significant? Well, look, the Chinese companies are very good at just changing the name. So if we sanction co company A, company B is going to all of a sudden arrive as a subsidiary or a new company, and they're not under the sanctions so that they can continue the work. So what we have to be able to do is go after China for not doing enough to clamp down on their uh, companies. And by the way, Neil, if you just look at this year alone, where 12 missile tests have been conducted by North Korea, and then you, you compare that to the increased trade between China and North Korea, this year alone, it's shocking. Well, that there's more of it. That there's a lot more trade. The, right. the trade so, so has increased so they're lying this, this quarter, teeth, so words. the Chinese right. are ignoring us. All right. they're, they're totally ignoring us. All right, I, I got that. I'm a little slow, but I got it. Um, Rick, help me with this. We, we always wait to see what the Chinese are going to do if we do anything. And we've always been afraid to get too rough with China because, well, they own a lot of our debt. Not as much as they used to. They could sell that. Interest rates would rise. I don't think that would happen. I don't know about you because they have nowhere else to go. But what do you make of the idea that a trade war would jar a lot of Americans because all of a sudden they're facing much higher prices for goods that they buy at Walmart or what have you? And that it, unless the president makes a very compelling case that there's going to have to be a, some sacrifice here, to send the Chinese a message. How would that go down? Well, first of all, you're right. It's not without pain. It's, it's extremely painful by putting sanctions on China if it came to that. I think we need to be prepared to, uh, to put the sanctions on. But I think that if we announced to China that you're either going to do business with the United States or you're going to do business with North Korea, that we would see a change of behavior pretty quickly. If we didn't see it, we should be prepared to immediately implement those sanctions. Look, at the end of the day, the first question is, is this a threat to our national security? If it's a threat to our national security, if we are concerned about having members of uh, Americans or, or members of the uh, U.S. military uh, taken out, killed by a missile launch from North Korea, then I think that we're going to have to calculate that some higher prices at Walmart are going to be inevitable. Uh, you know China very well. I guess you know Germany pretty well. Uh, just hearing these rumors that the president is looking at you to do something there, like an ambassadorship or anything, any truth to that? Look, uh, I don't have anything to announce today. The one thing that I will say is that I was a delegate for Trump. I was an early supporter for President Trump. I'm still a supporter of his. I think that changing Washington requires a lot of hands on deck, and, and I'll do whatever I can to help change Washington. Are you comfortable with the German language? Or? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, Neil. Okay. But good try. <laughs> yeah, I tried. I thought at a weak moment I'd get you there. Um, all right, uh, Rick Grinnell, always good seeing you, my friend.